Minister Yacoub, thank you again for being with us. Thanks for welcoming us here. Chairman Leong, thank you very much for your words, your support to us as well. Assistant, Strickling, uh, Assistant Secretary Strickling, thank you. Thank you for being with us here today. Um, your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends, today is indeed uh, a special day. But let me start with some facts. A year ago, I came to Asia, and frankly, I found no other way to explain our presence in Asia but to apologize to Asia. And I did. I, said, I made an apology because we were almost non-present here. A year later, we have 14 people in the region. We have a hub. We have local services. We have translation of content in local languages. We have transformed our presence in Asia, and there's more to come. This is the commitment of ICANN. We're going to the world, as we said a year and a half ago, and this is already happening. And you will see these maps building around the world, because if we stay in Los Angeles, as I said on the first day, then we are not the world's ICANN. To become the world's ICANN, we have to go to the world. Today, people in China can pick up the phone and we will answer them in Chinese and explain to them how they can participate in ICANN. Same with many other Asian cultures and languages. That was not possible a year ago. It is possible now. And thank you, Quek, personally, for the superb work you've done. You are now a reference model to how we need to work across the world. Thank you. And in that hub today, we have people from the Global Domain, uh, Domain Names Division that can support our registries and registrars and applicants in this region. We have people from the compliance team so that we can understand the needs of the region and how to support them. We have people that support our core mission of security, stability and resiliency now based here in Asia across the region. And finally, and most importantly, we have many people, those who are in light blue, are not in the hub. They're in the region. They're across the cities and countries of this vast area, supporting our engagement capabilities, building capacities, and bringing people into the structures of ICANN so that we can enlarge our family. This is the second year in our new season. When I started at ICANN, I said we have to till the ground, get things ready, and then hopefully we can get to the point uh, in this new season to see the fruit of our work. However, at this point in our second year, which is about halfway through my first tenure here or my tenure with you for the three years that the board asked me to come and serve you, I stop a little bit, and I think we should all stop and take stock. A lot is going on. A lot is on our minds. We're looking at the work we've done and saying there's a lot on our plate. But it is an important time for us to step back here in Singapore and think what is on hand, what is ahead of us, and what we need to do to stay engaged and to be successful in the phase ahead. So to take stock, I asked my team to engage with our community and to really take a community view as to everything that is going on at ICANN. And to do that, we decided we're going to create kind of a community activities map. So we can start understanding everything on hand that needs to be addressed across the community. And we divided all of these things into these three spheres. The core ICANN activities, the emerging activities related to the globalization of ICANN and the globalization of the IANA functions. And then finally, our engagement on a global level in internet governance. Let me break this down with you. As we listened to you, it became clear that each of these three areas had many cross-community activities. Let's look at them one at a time. Let me start with our core operations. 
Within our core operations, we have five, six major tracks of work that engage all of us together. Again, I'm not speaking about the many, many uh, areas of work and activities within our communities. I'm speaking about community-wide or cross-community activities. So in the Global Domains Division, we found that there are five key areas, one of which is about to start. That's why data privacy is still in white, but we're about to launch that effort because it's becoming important that we globally understand that. But let me focus your attention, for example, on the ATR2 area. Uh, as many of you know, we have a review mechanism that is cross-community, that is independent of ICANN, that comes in and basically looks at all of our activities to ensure that ICANN operates in an accountable and transparent way. The ATRT team came back to us with 50 plus recommendations in order to take ICANN to the next level of accountability and transparency. We must focus on these things, as my chairman said, and make sure we deliver on them for the global community so that ICANN is always viewed as an accountable, transparent organization. Another area of activity you would know is all the efforts like Quex and his colleagues under Sally Kosterton and Tarek Kamel related to engagement. We have three levels of engagement that are intense right now. We have regional engagement strategies that have been built from the bottom up with our communities that we need to put in place. We have global engagement activities in the areas like business. We now have a, a business function under engagement. Uh, we were recently at the GSMA engaging with the mobile business community, bringing them on board and built a very good set of bridges with them. These are important activities. And digital engagement. Uh, I promised you we will have a new website and the next few days you will see the new ICANN website and that website again for the first time was built from the bottom up with the community. You were engaged in it, you helped us design it, and we built it together in order to deliver value to you in engagement. But we cannot forget all of our common activities to plan the year ahead. So we have operational planning and budget planning cycles that need to happen. And it is important. ICANN's operational core budget is close to $100 million now. So we have to do it together, we have to manage it together, we have to agree together how to direct our resources in order to meet our collective, community-wide goals and objectives. Lots on the plate and lots to do. If I move to the next area, that's the ICANN and IANA globalization areas that just started for all of us. And as you recall, the board of directors of ICANN about a month ago issued a resolution in which they said, that these are the five areas of ICANN globalization we need to focus on. The transitioning of the IANA stewardship, ICANN's own accountability as an organization, looking at our policy structures and how we can enhance them and make them more global, including the GAC, looking at our legal structure and how our legal structure can be globalized, so it can serve the world, and finally, looking at the root system and ways to enhance it. These were the five initiatives, to a degree, that the board focused on, and in an effort to engage with the community, the board said we're going to create these advisory groups that will bring the community together to discuss them. Now, I'm, I have discussed the advisory groups with the board, and of course, since that discussion, something happened. The US government announced that it will start the process of transitioning its stewardship to the community. As a result, we are discussing right now at the board, and hopefully this week, while we're all together, the possibility of removing all these advisory groups and instead focusing all of our attention now on the areas that need our attention through public consultation. So we will continue discussing this with you through the week and hopefully together we'll make the right decision so we focus everyone, given also how much is on our plate, on the two key areas we need to focus on. Now, let me talk about these two areas because today we're going to start these two public consultations. The first one is about the IANA stewardship transition. This will be at 
So immediately after this session, we will launch the global process of responding to the invitation of the U.S. government to transition their stewardship to us. To us and all the people that we need to bring, because it's not just to ICANN. ICANN is just facilitating, but it's truly to all of us, with many of the communities represented here and those that couldn't make it today. We need to bring them into that global process. Now, I want to tell you now that this public consultation is about IANA transition. But we have discussed now with the community, with the leaders, with the board, as well as with the U.S. government, that we should also discuss how we're going to evolve ICANN's accountability as an organization. And let me separate these two very clearly. The IANA functions are very specific functions that are well-defined and we do them together with other leaders in the community and communities. We need to discuss how to manage these functions specifically. Separate from that, as I've heard from many of you just in the last few days, who is going to keep the ICANN organization in check? Well, today we have something called the affirmation of commitment. But the affirmation of commitment, which is a very important document, central to who we are and how we function, is a document that today, through the historical uh, record, was signed between ICANN and the U.S. government. We as a community should look at that and should look more broadly at ICANN's accountability and discuss how do we evolve these mechanisms so that ICANN is kept accountable and in check. And that discussion will be today as well at 5 p.m. So I invite you all to join us at 5 p.m. for that discussion separate from the IANA discussion. I want to say something on the IANA transition. First and foremost, in the presence of NTIA's leadership here, I think we should all recognize without question the stewardship of NTIA, the stewardship of the United States over the last 15 years, which has served the Internet and the world very well. And that recognition is important because it actually starts with the story that Dr. Crocker said when he speaks about them setting up their first little network with he and his friends and giving this to the world, keeping it open. What a powerful gift to the world that has continued with the progressively uh, less onerous stewardship and more permissive stewardship to the community over the last 15 years. It is important for us to remember that the U.S. government every few years said that the ICANN community is readier now, so we're going to change the mechanisms and instruments of stewardship. Up to the point last Friday where NTIA came to the conclusion that we are ready. And this is a testament of our work. It's a triumph of the multi-stakeholder model. And it's a testament that the United States fulfilled its commitment, which they made on the first day ICANN was born, that when the ICANN and global community are ready, they will transfer the stewardship. And they did. So thank you. Now, the second thing I want to say about this is that they're not transferring the stewardship to ICANN. They're transferring the stewardship to all of us in this community who must work together, as we have for the last 15 years. This is nothing new. I don't have to learn to work with the IETF and with the RIRs and these organizations. We have worked together for 15 years. It's been working, thank you very much. We have an internet that generates trillions of dollars of value to the planet. 
This is all because of the work of the people who labor in the background to ensure that the technical infrastructure of the internet is built and is working. And to them, the US government gives the role of bringing the global community on how we're going to replace that torture. And we should, again, take that responsibility with great seriousness. Great seriousness. The eyes of the world are on us. Will the multi-stakeholder model rise as it has for the last 15 years and carry? And my answer to the world today is it will. And you will start seeing this today in how we take this responsibility seriously. So with this, let me move on with our activities. Back to ICANN. The last bit of activities we have is the circle of activities related to the internet governance. And as you know, many of us have been saying, why is ICANN spending so much time on global internet governance? We have a lot to do. And now with the US decision, we even have more to do. We have to globalize IANA, we have to globalize ICANN. So, I want to link things again as we did in Buenos Aires. We are a member of the internet governance ecosystem. We have a responsibility. Part of that responsibility is to protect ICANN in the sense that we continue to do the mission we have to maintain the security and stability of the internet and to do our job and to ensure that we're not constantly guarding from some kind of a threat. That's the first reason we do it. But the second reason we do it is that ICANN, at the end of the day, is rooted in its responsibilities to the public. That's what drives us. And therefore, we have a responsibility as well in the global internet governance. However, as you saw very well, I hope, the circle of that work is smaller than the other circles. It should be prioritized as such. It should be important. We will pay attention to it. But it should be prioritized not never ahead of the core work that you have entrusted us to do at ICANN. Now, in the global internet governance area, we have three streams of work. We have the global internet governance forums, we have the OneNet dialogue forum, and we have the panel that we have partnered with the WEF, the World Economic Forum, as well as with the University of Southern California, the panel chaired by President Eels of Estonia. That panel will release its final report on its views of the future of internet governance in the month of May. And several of the panelists are here today, and I recognize Kathy Brown, the CEO of ISOP, and I think uh, Olaf Kochmann may be here, but he's also with us on that panel. Now, I want to spend, again, by the way, just like we did with the other advisory committees, the board is considering right now removing that advisory group so that we can focus on the cross-community working group that the community has put together and ensure that the discussion on internet governance is driven by you, by us, by the community, first and foremost. I want to spend a minute on something on a lot of our minds. Net Mundial. Net Mundial is one of the premier forums on internet governance that will occur this year. It will happen in Sao Paulo on the 23rd and 24th of April. We have received, I believe, thousands of interested participant applications. And the Brazilian government uh, and CGI, who was entrusted with the management of the conference, are going through that work at the moment. As well as the fact that they have received 189 submissions on proposals to improve internet governance. Clearly, the world wants to focus on this issue. This issue is important. Why? And why is Net Mundial central to it? Net Mundial is where we will start charting a multi-stakeholder model of internet governance. It is the place to do it. It is not the place we want to spend too much time on ICANN and IANA. I think the decision of the US government coupled with the processes we'll start today, are the venues and are the channels for discussing ICANN and IANA. 
Of course, people can discuss anything at an open multi-stakeholder conference, and they're welcome to discuss any subject. But we cannot miss the opportunity at Net Mundial to actually start looking at the broader internet governance issues. ICANN and its work, IANA and its work, are but a small piece of a vast mosaic of issues, technical and non-technical, national and global and regional, that we must address in Net Mundial. So I urge all of us to participate, remotely or personally, in this important dialogue, and to ensure that we do not miss the opportunity to start charting forward how this world will come together to govern the Internet. So a map we have, now what do we do? I urge all of us to go back into our stakeholder communities and take stock, look at all these tracks, look at all these activities, and focus our energies where we can add value. This is important. This is the important work of a community to make priorities and to decide how we can all succeed because, frankly, many of these activities right now are all mutually and critically important to our success. It is very hard to pick and choose which ones to stop. Where we could, we did stop the advisory groups. Where we could, we didn't address every aspect of globalization because we cannot do everything at once. So focus is important. And I welcome during the next five days dialogue and listening. We're going to all be engaged. So we make sure together that we focus and get this job done. Finally, I want to go back to some history. This is John Postel, the late John Postel. John, Vin Cerf, Bob Kahn, Steve Crocker, names of people who years ago used to manage the entire DNS on a small index card. John Postel had a little index card. That's how he managed the whole DNS. Today we have I can, uh, with hundreds of people, a community with thousands of people, and millions of dollars to do the job this great man did with immense commitment to the internet. But this is where it all started. And it started with our first meeting, by the way, ICANN's very first meeting was in Singapore. ICANN won, was in Singapore. ICANN won, was in Singapore. And together we traveled the world. We traveled the world. And we find ourselves here at ICANN 49, again in Singapore. Singapore has been a very important stop along the way. But the reason I show us this is to remind all of us that this has been a long road to this point. So when the US government decides it is time to trust us, that's because of all the work, starting with John, that has happened from day one until today. When reporters call me and they say, oh, it was because of this event or that event that this happened, I tell them my wife, who's a gardener, and works and labors in her garden and tills it and composts and do all of that, if I tell her that because of yesterday's rain, her vegetables are growing well, she'll be upset. There's a lot more to what we do at ICANN than an event or a person. It's all of us. This is our work. We're here today to receive this great honor from the United States government and to show the world that the multi-stakeholder model works. It is incumbent upon us to show the world it does work. And we will show the world it does work through our actions, not just our words. It's how we start today, after this session, to engage with each other and to build processes with private sector, governments, and civil society, all of us together, building stewardship to take the internet to the next stage. So let's not miss this opportunity. Let's not miss this opportunity. And let's do it, never forgetting the principles that the U.S. government put on the table, which I believe are good principles. 
And these are important for us to keep in mind as we start the next session. Number one, whatever we do to replace the U.S. stewardship must be rooted in the multi-stakeholder model. We cannot come back to them with a transition plan that hands our important work to a government, a group of governments, an intergovernmental organization. No, it will not work. Number two, the work the transition model we design must attend to the needs of the global community. Not any one part of the community, not any part of the world, all the global community. We must serve everyone with distinction and equally. That's the second condition the U.S. government put. The third condition the U.S. government put, that nothing we will come back with will jeopardize the openness of the Internet. The Internet we want the internet Crocker and his friends designed. The same principles that they used to design the technical architecture of the internet should be used for designing the governance architecture of the internet. Openness is very key. And then lastly, the US government made it very clear in this fourth principle that nothing we do should jeopardize the security, stability, and resiliency of the system we were entrusted to manage. And none of us want to see a nanosecond of interruption to that system. It drives the world. It's a global force for human development. It's a global force for the economy. It's entrusted for us to come up with that model. And Mr. Strickling, we will come back to you. With these conditions met, I have every confidence we will. Thank you. Thank you.